Toongrin.com Welcome to Watching Stuff, the show about watching stuff. I'm Nero, and with me is my Canadian counterpart, Y Boy. And today we're taking a look at the third, the third, third in the line of Lego movies. Yes, that's right. The Lego movies are going strong after they did the successful The Lego Movie, which we all thought they were gonna fuck up, but they didn't. Then they did. Lego Batman, which is kind of hard to fuck up because it's Batman, so even if you did make a terrible movie, chances are it still would have sold regardless. Yep. And then they finally decided, now, more than ever, we can fuck it up. Yep, fuck it up really hard with the Lego Ninjago mm. movie based off of the Ninjago line of Lego toys. Not to be confused with the Ninjago television show. Which is very... It's not connected to that. Yeah, it's very easy to confuse because a lot of the characters are basically the same. <laughs> Actually, the thing is, I remember uh, Lloyd in the TV show being way more annoying. Yeah. <laughs> like, comparatively, I thought he was more annoying in the TV show than he was in the film. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure in the annoying sort of scale, a lot of them changed because in this one, a lot of the characters are basically just one-sentence characters. <laughs> Well, if I could, uh, if I could take a moment here, I'd like to go on over to Wikipedia, you know, the source for all information, and yeah, yeah, yeah. if we're going over to Wikipedia, we can look up the characters, yeah. and... But how about we go over the story first, because we need to tell, like, the epic narrative that goes along with these epic characters. Well, it's, it's basically, it's basically every Lego movie. For some reason, Lego has this fixation about deadbeat dads or bad fathers, because, like, the first movie is uh, the kid, and he's playing Legos with his dad. It's all, you know, a metaphor for growing up and, you know, collector versus how a child plays with Legos. It's, That's the first film. And it's balanced, actually, a lot better. Yeah, and then the, the Lego Batman movies are all about Batman yeah. trying to become, like, the father figure of the family. Of the family with the new kids coming into his family. Just like, oh, I need families now. Yeah. And then this one is about a character named Lord Garmadon. And his dad is a um, global terrorist leader named Lord Garmadon. Who regularly attacks a city. You know, attempting to murder everybody and do horrible things. And then the story tries to play it off about a father just wishing to reconnect with his son. <laughs> well, that's the funniest joke of all. Yeah, it it really doesn't mesh too well. I mean, I know it's Lego, so it's like, yeah, but we're supposed to only kind of take it as, you know, as, as comic relief and a joke. But that's the thing is that if you look at the other Lego movie, like, go back to the first Lego movie. If you go back to that one, um, it knew how to treat its content very... Um, respectfully the idea that it was comedy or that it was even made for kids was a secondary thing it didn't um it didn't come in and sort of replace the idea of what the tone is right so like when um oh god the blind guy it's been so long since i've yeah. i've watched a lego movie uh but like uh morgan freeman's character like when he dies it's it's genuinely a dramatic scene he gets his hey he gets decapitated he got his head lopped off by like a quarter right so like it was, it was played very straight. Even with Metal Beard, the idea that he lost all of his limbs, save for his head, and he had to replace it with that uh, robot body, even that was actually far more dramatically played. Like he lost his crew; he was the only survivor, and he had to replace himself to be a cyborg in order to survive. Even right. that is played straight. Right, comedy whereas... was comedy, and drama was drama, and it basically yeah. stayed like that. It, and never well, the two shall meet. Yeah. And it, it sort of with the Serenity, like, it went a little bit on downhill slope after a while. Because we remember the Batman movie, we had that classic scene where Batman's trying to learn his lesson and all that. To try to say sorry, and he's just like, oh, I'm... S <laughs> yeah, and it, it, kill, it kills the moment, because, like, the whole point is that at, that at that point in the film, Batman is supposed to overcome 
his his callowness, his uh, his breakaway from like his connection to this family, the fact that he's been so closed off after um, Thomas and Martha Wayne were murdered, the fact that he was unable to really allow someone else back into his heart because he doesn't want to be hurt again. That is a part of a theme of that Lego Batman movie, and it's completely pretty much swept away as just a joke. Yeah, that it just kills any sort of the drama of that scene just to try to make it a funny joke. And that's the thing is like first film it understood how to be funny, but it understood where to be dramatic. It didn't try to make the drama funny. Whereas the Lego Batman movie isn't as bad at it. It really is just that one scene that kind of really kills it for me. Yeah. But then when you get to Lego Ninjago, that's where everyone just tosses their hands in the air. Everyone reached fuck it. Yeah, we just give up. We just give up. We want to make like three different movies and place it all into this one. Well, like they want to make three different movies. They want to uh, they, they want to come in and be like, look, man, we get this. We understand how to do this. People just want the same basic thing over and over again. That's why each film is like, a father figure of some sort, usually bad at connecting with their like family in some way. Right. Every film, and, and like I, when I watch this film, and keep in mind when I first saw this film in in theaters, I walked out at the fifteen minute mark. I, I actually had to go back and watch it, so why boy and I could do this. But <laughs> the the fact that I was so annoyed i was dude this was like alpha and omega levels bad for me when i first sat down those first 15 minutes it, just it really is I, because basically in the first 15 minutes it is so on the nose with a lot of the writing especially with the setting being ninjago this is ninjago city and all that and everyone's saying ninjago every like 30 seconds it's just like yeah, bang, bang, thing, it's like, bang 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 they want you. They want you to know as much as possible that this is Ninjago. That the city is called Ninjago. The world is called Ninjago. It's Ninjago news. It here's the thing too that I, I think we we could both agree on with the, in terms of this film, mm -hmm. is that when you look at the Lego Movie, it's a movie first. The products were just a a the the toys were a byproduct of a successful movie. Yes. The Lego one, the Lego Batman one, not so much. It, for the most part, it's it's story driven. But when you get to that third act, it's very clear that they just wanted to push anything that was going to be in the Lego Dimension yeah. game. Right, and this one is just all Lego Ninjago toys. <laughs> yeah, th this one is strictly full blown balls to the wall. It's a toy commercial. It, 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 you know, you could argue, well, isn't that what like the first Lego movie is? Isn't that what the Transformer movies are? You know, here's the thing. At the base core, you could say that about any property that's made for kids that makes toys. Technically speaking, Frozen's just a toy commercial. Right. It was just a commercial to sell toys to little kids. Same thing with Moana or Zootopia. You know, the fact that they're making movies, then they make toys off these movies. Yeah, technically they're all commercials because you see the movie, then it's like, oh man, I saw Zootopia. I really want a toy of Nick Wilde and Judy Hopp. So then you go out and buy your Disney Infinity toy, you know, before it's before Disney sank that freaking toy line because they're idiots. Yeah. Now it's like you watch the Lego Movie and it's like, oh, that was a good movie. Yeah, but wouldn't you want like maybe like a metal beard or something like that? Yeah, I kind of would. That'd be kind of neat. Well, check it out. We just happen to make one. It's a byproduct of the movie because it's a solid film. Whereas, like, you get to this one, everything, every single thing feels like it's just a toy they're trying to push. Yeah, and that makes it so much more infuriating to watch this. Especially in the first 15 minutes where it's just showing off the giant mechs these ninjas have. And basically like, oh yeah, let's, let's see this flying one, let's see this water one, let's see Lloyd's big dragon one firing off all the cool lasers and missiles and such. Yes, back to back to back. That's another thing, too, this movie suffers from is repetitiveness. Uh, they, they will do the same joke in, like, a two-minute span of each other. Like, like, the joke of, like, Garmadon leaving and, like, Lloyd is so desperate for his dad's approval, which is weird because, like, Lloyd's, like, what, 15? Yeah. So and, like, his mom talks up how, like, shitty his dad was. And, yeah. like, everyone hates his dad. And he's, but he's just like, I really want to reconnect with my dad. I wanted to say something nice about me on my birthday. Wasn't it, wasn't it nicer in the trailer? Wasn't, like, his mom... Wasn't his mom forthcoming with, like... 
your father was a pretty good guy, but like apparently, like wasn't she a lot more like yeah. spoken up about his dad yeah. in the trailer than yeah, what was in the final product? Yeah, because this was sort of like the big problem with the movie. Like it went through like multiple rewrites. You can really tell for it. Like this, this film had like seven writers on it. And you can tell from the trailers, there was a scene completely chopped out with the mother character. Basically saying like, oh Lloyd, your father was just such a forthcoming sort of guy. He said that he would take over the world. I thought he was just saying that metaphorically. Yeah, that's not in there. Uh, to really push it further home is that like, the, uh, they, push, they push the angle that Garmadon doesn't care about his family, doesn't care about his son, only cares about the destruction, subjugation, and domination of Ninjago, and that's it. They they nail that point home so much so that he kills Master Wu. Oh, we, oh, we haven't mentioned Master Wu, who is Jackie. Oh, Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan plays a Japanese character, which is offensive on so many fucking levels. We stop and think about it. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I'm pretty sure the name Wu is a Chinese name, not a Japanese name, but. They're ninjas. Ninjas are Japanese, not Chinese. <laughs> yeah. But I guess the fact that I guess the fact that they cast an Asian at all for that character in and of itself, I guess, is <gasps> meh, mildly impressive. Mildly impressive. I mean, they didn't have to cast. They only cast Jackie Chan because it's like, who's a famous actor that I guess no kid who would enjoy this film would actually know. Well, haven't you heard of Jackie Chan's new show? Like, come on, all the kids know Jackie Chan nowadays. Like, the, the only show kids should know Jackie Chan from is Jackie Chan Adventures, where he's a badass archaeologist, hanging out with his annoying as fuck niece, his awesome wizard uncle, and their big lovable Oaf Toru. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be nice if they know it from that. <laughs> that that would be ideal, but that's, that's not the case. For some reason, I, here's the thing. I know they cast Jackie Chan for, like, big name actor credibility because I guess the idea is like well shit if they're guys like Y Boy and Nero they like Jackie Chan they saw that Jackie Chan adventure show that's so good that they keep going on and on about <laughs> so logic would dictate oh if we put Jackie Chan in this they'd really enjoy this movie saw the movie nah Jackie nah you the Jackie Chan's out <laughs> you, yeah, you, you you really did like first off he's barely in it yeah, he's in the beginning at, in a very pointless narrator role <laughs> Yeah, and he, very much so. he's at the end in a pointless narrator role, and he is the and he is the mentor to all these ninjas, and he's sort of swept away by the twenty minute mark. Not even metaphorically swept away. Like he he gets into a fight with Garmadon on a bridge. Garmadon knocks him off the bridge, and he falls to his death in a river, well, only to pop death. up and be swept away by the river. And it's, it's supposed to be very dramatic. And then for some reason, the ninjas make friends with Garmadon, who killed their like right away, sensei. Yeah, like the other was it four members? Five? No, the, I, I, it's so hard to rem remember them. Well, maybe we might as well just go go back to the characters and how just okay, so boring they are. Okay, so the first one's Lloyd Garmadon. He's the character that will get the most development because he's clearly the mark that we're supposed to be connecting to. Yes, and he's the green um, ninja. He's the green one. Then there's Kai, and I'm gonna start reading you off like the lines of how they abbreviate it on Wikipedia. Now, the thing about Wikipedia in that it is edited by people, yes, but the thing is, people tend to go fairly descriptive. Like, if you look up the new 2017 It Chapter 1 movie, they go into a pretty, like, lengthy... If I recall, they went to, like, a paragraph of who Pennywise was. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, um, alternatively, we're on the Lego Ninjago Wikia page, and we'll go over this. So, we, we covered Lloyd, and it says, The Green Ninja, leader of the secret ninja force, Lord Garmadon and Masako's son, and Master Wu's nephew. Yeah, that's pretty much his character in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, Lord Garmadon, the dark ninja and evil overlord, the father of Lloyd, the ex-husband of Masako, and the brother of Master Wu. Yeah, that's pretty on point. Okay. <laughs> and then Kai, the hot-headed red ninja of fire and Nia's brother. I'd like to point out, he's not remotely hot-headed. He's barely in the movie to be hot-headed. Yeah, if anything, there, like, there the closest character would just be, like, a, go a goofy doofus. That's it. Yeah, like, like when you think about it, like, he was barely in the film. He didn't have the opportunity to be, like, hot-headed and make a mistake. If anything, that's more on Lloyd than, than Kai, because, like, 
Lloyd got so angry with his dad that he like released a, a ton of missile. He, he because of Lloyd's hot headedness, he actually got a uh, weapon of mass destruction and summoned a giant cat kaiju that started murdering people and like destroying buildings. Right. Yeah. So he like, <laughs> Lloyd is hot headed, not Kai. Yeah, Kai is just there. Yeah, Kai's there. Uh, Nia, the strong. Silver Ninja of Water, <laughs> Kai's sister, and Jay's crush. You gotta love her because every time that she's on scene, she does like, I'm a strong, independent woman. I'm, I'm really getting sick of the Lego movies, by the way. After the Lego movie, every time they do a female, it's wild style. It's always wild style, but this is the worst wild style so far. Well, wi the thing is, wild style is exempt from being the strong female archetype because there's still a bit more meat to her character. Not as much as they're could probably be because it was Emmett's story primarily. Right. But there's still you still understood Wild Style. You understood how she's upset because she's not the chosen one because she thought she finally had a purpose and she felt like she was special and then she felt like that that quality of her was taken away. Right. So that's that's still something. You get to the Lego Batman movie. It, fucking Batgirl is just clearly Wild Style. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All they did was race bend a character because they want to hit. They want to hit those markets. That's why they made Batgirl black yeah. instead of just being Batgirl. Uh, so they, yeah. they they race bent her, and then she acts just like Wild Style. Like she's tough and yeah. no nonsense, and she could like fight the she could fight the super villains, which makes Batman superfluous. Yeah, the, the best thing about that about that character still is that she's not on the nose about it. She's not saying like, "Oh, women need women are like this. We gotta be strong and such." She she hilariously calls Batman out on his bullshit because yeah. she's like. If you look at if you look at this chart and she pulls up like a uh, a flashpoint, yeah. uh, like uh, or, or a PowerPoint presentation, and you look at it, and you're just like, man, when you look at it like that, Batman looks like a dick. Like yeah. he beats up the mentally ill. Batman looks like an asshole. Yeah, that and, funny. And, that and here, a character. Like in here, Nia is nothing. She's not really strong. She's barely in the movie. Again, like. She's she's strong in that she's the female character where she's like yeah you know it's the same thing like um God did you ever see uh did you ever see Big Hero Six Yeah it's not Big Hero Six You remember how annoying it was when Go Go would say like woman up <laughs> I don't even remember it, her saying woman up I guess I glossed over that but God be, because that's it's, awful. It, it's because it's like is it man up a misogynistic term <laughs> I, I guess if you want to look at it in that context sure I mean. Like, the phrase comes from, from a time where, like, women primarily did secondary things and the men, you know, did... Men were like the hunters and gatherers. Yes, it's dramatically different now. So, like, the thing is, we shouldn't have have it be like, oh, woman up. No, just stop saying man up, because man up sounds stupid, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like, use they, man up. They, they, like, they both sound dumb. Like, bulk up. Because <laughs> that's just yeah, more about muscles. <laughs> and, you know, get your shit together. Get, oh, yeah, but there's that. <laughs> you know? Whereas like Nia, Nia is so such a wannabe like strong female character, it's as if it's as if they had a checklist where it's like if we have a strong female character, then females can buy the Legos because then the females will feel an attachment to something. And I'm really getting sick of companies feeling like everybody needs some kind of representation in their shit. Yes, and I to connect to and it. I, and I hate the fact that they want to just sort of push that representation. So you have to have the character say dialogue, based, saying like, "Oh yeah, I'm so strong and such." Like, no one better but to push push me around. Yeah, it's it's the thing where it's like a strong female character can be a strong female character without making it a point that she's female. Again, it goes back to that that clip I showed you from Sonic Boom, where Knuckles of all the characters has to point out, you know, if you bring attention to it. You're really doing a disservice to the idea of, instead of making it the norm that women are strong, independent, and badass, that you have to bring attention to it. It'd be like if you were watching the Alien movie with Ripley. Yeah. And, like, Ripley had a point out where she's like, I'm a strong, independent woman, and I'm fighting aliens, just like a man. And you're just like, yeah, Jesus yeah, fucking Christ, Yeah, because it's Christ, trying to okay. make it, like, special in a sense, where we're trying to make it the norm. Like, this is but just sort of my thought process, process on it. If you're trying to make it special, it'll never be the norm. No, because you're trying to make it special, but that's the thing. We don't treat it like, oh, men overcoming things. It's not like we all watched Rocky and it's like, Rocky did it. He overcame the fight because he's a man. He did and it with he his do penis anything. powers. Like, yeah, right? No, it's just like Rocky was some loser underdog, but he stepped up and r rised up to the challenge of his rival and stood the, you know, the ground to fight. Yeah, rarely for th people th that when it comes to male characters, we ever think like, oh my god, because of his testosterone and penis, 
That is why he won the day. Yeah, what Star versus? We don't bring attention that it's like, it's because she's a princess that's independent. No, Star just happens to be a princess, and she happens to be independent. It doesn't really matter that she is a princess. That's really yeah. inconsequential. She just happens to be one. Yeah, we don't think of and Marco as just like, oh, well, because he's so such a man, he can kick all the monsters' asses. No, he's his own character. His gender doesn't really have anything to do with what his character is. And that's what they're trying to push with Nia, and they fail because... She's barely in the movie. Jay, and I love this, Jay, the quiet and cautious blue ninja of lightning. Mm. It's even better because they don't even mention under him that he's got a crush on Nia. Like, that's... That's that's how little of a fuck the, like, anyone cared to write, you know, do this list. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the only scene that shows any sort of crush is that he talks to Nia sometimes. Wasn't there one, only one scene, and it was them at the high school... And he's like, hey, Nia, how you doing? And, like, that was it. It's like, oh, good, there we established it. There it, it. Thank God. the shyness, and that's, her, that's his love. Right there. There, there, there we did it. They're, they're, they're in love. Oh, is this going like, to be concluded in, like, the third act? New. New little. New. Are we not going to build on this in any way? New. <laughs> so he just has a crush on her for one scene. Yeah. The thing that gets me is, like, you could have had that be a good character dynamic, but you didn't do anything with it. Also, is anyone else sick of the idea of, like, we have a team of heroes, and there's always one that's, like, a cowardly little shit? Yeah, because you gotta show just that they the coward overcoming adversity. Like, and, But he doesn't overcome adversity! <laughs> no, he just, yeah, he just gets powers later, but whatever. Like, I like those sort of characters, because I do, because there is something that's nice to just about see, seeing the oh, character yeah, that no, has but, fear inside them overcoming it. Yeah, but it. Y you want a prime example of that kind of archetype, and it works? Like, a genuinely good one that works? Yeah. Luigi. Right. Because... Think about it, Luigi's Mansion, Mario, his big brother, the hero, the guy who's able to always be courageous, gets abducted by King Boo, and it's up to Luigi of all people, the cowardly younger brother, the one that's really not up to snuff like his big brother is, but he decides to, like, he decides to, like, you know, get it all together, and he goes out, and he decides to go and, you know, he attempts to save his brother, he tries to stand up, he, he, he has the underdog, like, angle. Because he was cowardly, but he stepped up to the big... I gotta go save my big brother. Exactly. Whereas it's like... The joke is, Jay's just sort of a coward. He just screams like, Oh, God, I'm scared. Somebody save me. Yeah, and it's, it's not even funny. It's just annoying. Yeah. And he's barely in the movie, so it doesn't matter. Then there's, uh, there's Zane, the robotic white ninja of ice. I gotta ask, why do they have a robot? Uh, it, it, like is it is is it just a joke? Was it was the TV show? Did they build up on the idea about him being a robot? Because really, in this one is I really don't. And this remember. one is just like, and this one's just like robot. Ta da! Is is that is that like it? Yeah, it's funny. Well, no, like a joke has like a setup and a punchline. This is just a robot that talks like a robot, and then makes references that no kid's gonna get. Shit. <laughs> yeah. We're like the Beatles, yes, because every child in 2017 know who the, the Beatles are by this point. Exactly. But no, that's for the older audience that's definitely going to be sitting there just like, yep, I get that reference, and that's why I love this, this movie. I got the reference, and even I was just like, well, what kid's going to understand that reference, though? That's, <laughs> is that like, and really, that's there for guys like me? I don't give a fuck about the Beatles. Who cares? <laughs> I'm here to see the Lego movie. I don't... I'm not looking for my musical references. And, and wait, does that mean in universe the Beatles are a thing? I'm sure they are because they would sell their toys sometimes. Yeah, right. Like, oh yeah, I'm surprised. They, I'm surprised. Like the movie didn't stop. Buy the yellow submarine Lego figure, twenty nine ninety nine at your local <laughs> retailer Walmart. Be sure to get it now. Don't be a dick. Support Ringo Starr. He probably has a drug addiction. <laughs> now, now, what about the last ninja of the team? Cole, the, the laid-back, music-loving, black ninja of Earth. That's it. Out of curiosity, I don't even remember. Was he actually black? No, he wasn't black. Was, None was of them he, were black. Was, was he yellow? Well, yeah, he was yellow like all the other ones. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No diversity in this Lego movie, people. It's a horrible, racist caricature. It's hey, like, hey, hey, there's a robot on the team. That's diversity. And a girl. And a girl, that makes it diverse. Yeah, and like, Cole plays with records because... 
I don't know. Music. Music. Yeah. It's hip. No, and like th- that's the whole thing. Like narratively, all they try to do is like they they build up Garmin on being a dick, being as evil incarnate as can be, and then when they get to the third act, they actually try to flip it and show that he's a heartbroken father who misses his baby boy. They Garmin, actually try to pull uh, that shit. I mean, I and I hated that because they're trying to do the whole whole by the midpoints, just like Garmin was working alongside the ninjas now to be their impromptu master, I guess. I don't even understand uh, I don't want to be your sensei because I fucking murdered the last one. And then we're all completely fine with that. You just uh, murdered him. Look, that's fine. I, it's weird that Lloyd wasn't like, you murdered my uncle. Like, the only father figure I had in my life. Yeah, but they're all completely fine with that. Especially all the other ninjas. Like, no one gives a fuck. Oh, no. Master Wu's dead. Yeah, they never taught us how to be ninjas. Goes- <laughs> We're just gonna hang out with Lord Garmadon. Because <laughs> we just suck his ninjas. So we're gonna ask our ask our villain for it. Yeah, and, and, and they, they pull that power of one shit. Like, they get to the end and they, they're all given like these artifacts, but it turns out that the artifacts are actually inconsequential. It's the power inside of you the entire time. It's it's like somebody was like, Yeah, we got scripts here for all these fucking kid movies and shit. We don't know what to do. Uh, we might as well just uh, put the tropes in there. Who gives a fuck? Look, we're just selling uh, the toys. We're making a commercial. But it doesn't, moving on back, moving, moving that aside, like the whole point of the story is just more Lloyd, Garmadon, and just daddy issues. That yeah, is the plot every, line of the story. Every other character is pretty superfluous, actually. Like, Master Wu has no real, any connection with Garmadon. He's supposed to be his brother, but there's one fight with them, and then that's it. Master Wu's gone for the rest of the film. I guess either Jackie Chan was too busy to record dialogue, and they had to work around that limitation, or maybe even Jackie Chan was like, fuck this. And then they had to work around that limitation because there's, like, really no compromise with Master Wu and Lord Garmadon. Um, Lord Garmadon is a very fluctuating character who's... He's meant to be as evil as evil can be, but then they try to make him as really... Like, they try to make him funny. And unlike yeah, and Bill Cipher, where it works, it's just kind of just annoying. Yeah, and sympathetic at the end, which totally goes against anything, like... <laughs> That would be close to trying to get the Bill Cipher levels. Well, like at least Bill Cipher wasn't sympathetic. Bill Cipher is like Pennywise. He's an evil dick and he enjoys it, and that's it. And it's like, yeah, yeah and he has fun with being evil, and that's fine. You could go that angle, but that the thing is, they did that with Lord Garmadon most of the time. He was like evil incarnate, and he enjoyed being evil. And then they try to flip the script on you to try and squeeze blood out of a stone to be like, <laughs> you don't understand. He's just a he's just a father who, who misses his baby. <laughs> Boy, uh, don't we remember that line from the very beginning where we're basically just calling Baby Lloyd an ugly little piece of crap? Well, he's like, he's like, you know, ugly, whiny, really annoying. Like he he talks shit about like how he didn't want this fucking kid, and then all of a sudden in the third act, because there's seven goddamn writers, um, in the third act all of a sudden it's like, you know, your mother finally realized who I was and she took you away from me, and you're like. Wait, are you trying to put this all in Masako all of a sudden? That like she's some kind of bitch? Yeah. You're, 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 you're a terrorist. She rightfully so took him, took him away from you. You're dangerous. You're, you're a fucking terrorist that hits up cities, causing mass destruction and killing people. You, and now you're trying to put it on the wife that she's a bitch for taking your kid away. Fuck you, and fuck you, WB, for propagating that shit. Yeah, that's some real girl power right there, trying to put it all on her. Oh, come on. You you, you know that, that Nia is, is powerful. She rode a motorcycle. I'm talking about the mom character. Who the shit cares about Nia? Oh, but- you know the mom's a strong female because apparently she's, like, so famous that they could paint her on the side of, like, motorcycles. <laughs> oh, my God. This movie has no identity. No, not at all. It's trying to be a. It's trying to be several different movies all at once, <laughs> and the main movie it's trying to be does not work at all. It, it really t- rock bottom. This is this is horrible to me. 
Yeah, I would say rock bottom as well. Even the like, animation, it feels like it's getting cheaper with each incarnation. Like, that first Lego movie, everything's a Lego. Flames are Legos. Even water are, like, small, those small, like, Lego nubs to make the water. And that's so amazing. And then you and get now to, like... you have a mixture of Legos and CG and just sets and all that. And yeah, because, like... doesn't they, meld together. They started that with the Lego Batman movie, and then they go full force here where it's like, fire's just fire, water's just water. Fuck it, not everything needs to be a Lego. Who the hell cares anymore? Look, we got you by the ass wallet. Doesn't matter. We got your fucking money. Who gives a shit? And that's what it feels like. It feels, this feels like a cynical cash grab. Yeah, it's just sad. Really I don't even, sad. I don't even want to see the next Lego movie. Yeah, it's let's like, to the first one. I, I, I'll see it, but I do not want to see it in theaters. I do not feel like it's going to be, be worth my time. I don't feel like it's going to be worth my money. Yeah, because I, this, this series has betrayed our trust in it at this well, point. Well, like, it's, it's WB in a nutshell, though, is because, like, when you really stop and get to it, this is what WB does. Like, um, like Harry Potter, all of a sudden, oh, we're going to have, like, you know, we're going to break the last book into two into two movies. Oh, why? And the reason was like, oh, because everything in this one's important. Oh, okay, so every other fucking movie, you could dissect the shit out of it beyond belief, and that was A-OK. -okay. But all of a sudden, this one's important. And then you realize, oh, it's important because this is the last of the Harry Potter movies, and they want to make money out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what about the new uh, Stephen King It movie? Oh, well, that's supposed to be two films. Okay. But now the big thing going around is like, oh, shit, did you see how much money that made us? Because we made it for only like $35 million. We got a lot out of it. So uh, let's maybe make it a trilogy. Yeah. When there isn't enough material to make that into a trilogy because you already did the first movie in the kid's perspective. So there's nothing to take away from that. Um, <laughs> then they did the spin-off to Harry Potter. Uh, I mean, was it uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where They Live yeah. or whatever the fudge? And yeah. they did that not because they want to, but because they want to get they want to milk the Harry Potter train because they do not they can't get franchises off the fucking ground because they keep fucking up the DC stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even what, what was it Hobbit? Yeah. You know, oh, you can make that one movie. What if we made it three Ooh. movies? Well, okay, right. Wh oh, why? Yeah, three. Even was that supposed to be like the shortest of the books? Well, it's just one book. Right. The Hobbit, the Hobbit, if I remember, The Hobbit wasn't multiple books. It was just one book. And it's supposed to be like a kid's story, too, if I remember correctly. Like, the idea of it is that it, it's, just a, it's just a small adventure story about a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins who goes on a journey with a bunch of dwarves to get back their home that was taken from them by a dragon who sleeps on a pile of gold. I don't even remember the fucking, like, five army shit. I don't remember <laughs> that from the actual book. And I don't know if that was just the add-on stuff, because, like, years down the line, they added more and more crap to the mythos of, like, Lord of the Rings, so they started caking crap on. Right. So, like, I don't even know. That's the thing, though. Like, WB has finally shown itself as being as, as callous, as cynical, and uncaring to the point where it's like, I, I don't trust you guys. And it sucks because I was so happy for another animation company because, like, really, animation's sort of limited to, like, Pixar, Disney, and DreamWorks primarily. Blue Sky will occasionally throw something out there, but nine times yeah. out of ten, it sucks anyways. Yeah, for the big theatrical ones. Like, we're trying to find other animated studios outside in the DVD realm, and that's just sort of slim pickings at this, moment, at this yeah. moment. Yeah. So, oh. yeah, I'm... 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 I'm Call me cynical, but I'm I'm out. I don't want to see these in theaters. I mean, I might if our, if, if our channel grows to the point where the fact that we're like a fully fledged, full blown channel that's successful that can like hold itself, like like Markiplier's channel or Jacksepticeye's channel, then I will happily go see as many crappy movies as we need to. But because we have to pay out of pocket for this, I don't want to go see it. Yeah. Like, even yeah. if I see... Dude, I saw the Lego Ninjago movie on a $6 Tuesday, and I still feel like <laughs> I was robbed. And the only best part about that was, like, after the 15 minutes, and I was walking out, and I was strutting out like a 1930s cartoon character out of, like, Cuphead, the, the woman at the counter looked at me, Hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah. We walked out of the movie. Oh, was it bad? It's terrible. How are things in terms of, like, you know, refunds? Oh, we don't do refunds. Have a good day! And, I, like, the Fonz, I kicked the door and I, sl I slid backwards moonwalking out of it. <laughs> that, that's how disenfranchised I was, was, like, I wasn't even mad at anybody. I really wasn't. I was just like, well, this is disappointing. It, it, it really is. And it, it didn't do well, really, financially. $70 million and only made 106 back. Yeah, no, no it's def definitely... <laughs> 
it, it definitely shows that it isn't like this level of writing now is not going to pass for, with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing was like Lord and Miller wanted to do something special when they did the first one. Like th they knew it was a toy commercial, but they owned up to the idea of like making it narrative driven first, where this one comes into play, and it's it's so cynical, it's so yeah. greed driven by the idea of like let's just sell toys for the Legos and that's it. Like it's. It it makes it disgusting to disgusting to watch in, in a sort of overall sense and and just in a bare bone sense it's very boring to watch yeah it's 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 very dull because you're given all these characters but you don't do anything with the majority of them so that's pointless the idea that we have a team movie and you don't do an emphasis on the team that's a that's a failing watch Guardians of the Galaxy that's a movie yeah. about team dynamic watch um shit I can't even think of even Avengers. That's a team yeah. dynamic movie. But this is like this is like Suicide Squad, where it's we got a bunch of characters together, but they don't really interact well with each other or do yeah, anything with on, each other. Yeah, we focus more on the family aspect, where, where it's just bare bo bones and just barely there. It, like, it even it even suffers from the same problem as Suicide Squad, where it's like it focuses primarily on a very small group of the like we have all these colorful characters. Yeah, but we only focus over here. And it's like, they focus on, on Lloyd and Lord Garmadon, and that's it. And, like, Suicide Squad, it's like, yeah, it's all about uh, Harley, because she's a fan favorite, and Deadshot, and the rest, fuck them. Yeah, exactly. Uh. So, but I mean, that what, was the, the Lego Ninjago movie. Rock bottom for the both of us, right? Rock, yeah, I, yeah, no, I, I don't recommend this for anybody. Uh, I, little kids will love it, of course, but pff, you could, again, that argument has like no holds no water. You could show a little kid anything. <laughs> even even in a bigger sense, I, I don't think it will really just. It, it won't be memorable for them after a while. I don't. No, think. but like like the two year old that was in the theater that I was in, like that two year old looked like he was having the time of his life. He's just a two-year-old. Oh, yeah, no, he, he certainly won't remember this crap, I can tell you that much. That, and the worst part is... Could have been, like, his first movie. And the worst part is, he's two. You can't even buy Legos for him. Right. Because he'll, he'll choke to death. Choke. <laughs> Legos! <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, that's how I felt. I felt like I was choking on a Lego. This entire movie felt like I was walking across a never-ending path of Legos barefoot that would never stop. <laughs> Uh, All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching and watching stuff. We really appreciate you for stopping by. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Check out our website, tunegrin.com. If you want to support us, you can go on Patreon. You can go to our Tee Public store. Both of those, the money gets funneled back into us. And also be sure to check us out through Vidme. Vidme is an awesome service. It's basically like old school YouTube before all the corruption and piss poor management set in. Yep, if anything is taken off of YouTube, they will be up on Vidme and our also website, ToonGrin.com. Yeah, because YouTube is very picky and because we're small content creators and we don't make them a lot of money, they'll step on us if it means supporting the bigger people. So be sure to check out the Vidme stuff because Vidme supports us. Vidme is like old school YouTube. It's for content creators by content creators. Exactly. And as always, remember to tune in to ToonGrin. Bye-bye. Ciao for now. Don't choke on a Lego now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? You might end up with a Lego Ninjago in your throat. Oh, God, no.